What's up guys, welcome back to another video with Lafoukos It's been a while but um, Yeah, what can I say guys Core content is hard to make nowadays but Whatever we get along we make But yeah Today we're going to be, like the title says, we're going to be changing the Shocks on the Etios um, We're in the golf right now but We still need to get this thing tuned Couple of things we still need to change on it as well RS4 uh, Fuel pressure valve and yeah, then I think that's basically just a few, uh, fuel pressure valve and then a tune and then this thing should be up and running on the road again It's been standing around for a while because we've been using the ATOS honestly because it's more fuel efficient So yeah guys, if you're looking for a fuel efficient car, I'll have to go for the T10 instead of a Golf But um, sure guys, let's get into it, not much chatting, um, let's get the work done <music> I've been driving around in this Etios for a while now and honestly it's, it's just a good little car check it out this car has been driving for I don't know if you can see that 179,000 kilometers and the shocks hasn't been changed ever since so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open up the bonnet the job looks to clean take out there it looks a little bit crusty here yeah? but we'll clean that off with a wire brush or something yeah as well but honestly it looks much easier than the than the golf so we just have to loosen up this here loosen up that obviously check up the car and then we should be able to see what we work with so let's check it up guys and Change the shocks. So while I get the score checked up, if you are enjoying this video, give it a thumbs up so it reaches those who need it. And if you find it helpful, please hit the subscribe button and please watch to the end. Alright, so now that we loosen the wheel nuts, um, all I'm going to have to do now is jack up the score. So, let's just do a little YouTube magic and jack the score up. Alright, so, this looks fairly simple. We just have two bolts over there. I don't even see a link rod or anything. Nope. The system still works with the stabilizer ball attached to the, I think it's the lower control arm, so that's how the stabilizer system works on this. So normally you have a, a link rod on the VW, as I said, you have a link rod here attached to the spring that goes to the, that goes to the sway bar or torsion bar, whatever you call it. But I see this system still works with the torsion or sway bar attached to the lower control arm that helps with cornering or stiffness of cornering. But it looks like we just have to loosen the bolt on top loosen these two bolts here and the shock strut should be out so let's get into it guys wheel out of the way all you need to do the impact gun loosen these bolts and uh, nope wrong one. out So you keep them together. Come on. 
there we go. Make sure you keep this together. And then your shock should be free. Check it out. But I think I'm going to need to loosen this here to free up. We just put this bolt back in. Just forgot here. If we look over here, here's a cable that's attached to the shock. So I'm going to need to loosen. There's a bolt at the back here I just have to loosen to, um, to free up this little guy here. So let me just put this back in. You can see here the, the brake line is hooked up to this bracket over here. And we're just going to loosen this bracket to free up the brake line. Ah, 14 guys so if you didn't know uh, Japanese cars you hardly ever find a 13 on them you'll normally find if you get your small bolts it'll always be a 14 or it'll be a 12 so just keep that in mind Japanese cars don't use a 13 I'm not sure why but I'll do research on it for you and I think I'll put it in this video as well so just check it out and now to the top and this should come out easy. Yeah. That's loose. I just need to check that this thing doesn't fall out here. So The shock is out. This is basically what keeps the shock mounted to the top there. It's out. The shock should be free. Now we just need to do the same for the other side. It shouldn't be difficult, but uh, yeah, I'll put you on a time lapse and I'll do that. So with regards to that 13mm bolt head, the main reason there is no 13mm bolt heads on Japanese cars is because of the Japanese industrial standards. They use only metric size fittings and not the imperial metric mix that we use. So if you thought it was because of Japanese superstition, you would be incorrect. Those numbers are 4 and 9, which is translated to and suffering in Japanese. So this is our old shock guys, and this is our new shock. Excuse the noise, if you can hear it. Um, I do live on a busy road. So on the main road, so it will sound very busy here, but as you can see, the shocks look very much the same. So we just have to swap out the spring right now. And to swap out the spring onto the shock, we're gonna need these spring holders, which clamp on like that to compress the spring on both sides. So once we compress the spring, we're gonna move the spring over to the shock, and then we should be able to mount it back in the car. So let's do that, guys.
So guys, if you didn't know, before installing the shock, you basically have to, what they call bleed the shock, which means you just have to bottom it out once. And once you bottom it out, you'll see like a little bit of oily residue on the tip of the shaft. And that will basically deem the shock bled. So let's bleed the shock. See that little bit of oily line there? A little bit oily, that basically deems a shock bled. So we should be able to install the shock now. complete strap guys also without the head to go into the car so all I, so all I need to do now all I need to do now is get this other one in here and yeah let's get into it guys I've done everything I've installed everything so I'm just gonna do a quick rundown of what we've done and the spanners we used and the spanner <laughs> the spanners we've used so around here guys both these both these bolts over here, left and right, uses an 18 spanner or 18 socket if you want to use it. Um, the little bolt over here to loosen the brake lines from the from the actual shock itself. This this bolt is a 14, so you need a 14 to loosen up that. And the top mounts here. So I've taken off the original shocks, the Monroe shocks. They were a 17 to loosen up the stop mount bolt here or the stop mount um, nut. So with replacing the new shocks, I'm not sure if it's changed or whatever, but you'll probably have to use an 18 on top here for the new shocks. But the originals are a 17. A 17 and an Allen key, I'm not sure. Don't know how to. Oh, let me just check here. The Allen that you have to use is a 6. A six mil allen, six mil allen millimeter allen you have to use in there to, to hold it down in there, and then you have to use your 17 to tighten up this. But you don't turn this at all, you just have to hold the shock solid or hold the stop, hold the shock still while using this allen bolt here. If you turn this, you could mess up the shock. So hold tight, tie up here, don't move this. Perfect, all right. So I'll just tie up this now, guys, and then once I've tied this up, we should be able to put the the wheels, put the wheels back on, and once the wheels are back on, we'll just have to reverse the car or turn the car around, put it back in again, and then we can start on the your shocks. But let's do that quickly. So now that we've tightened up that side and the side guys we just have to put the wheels on now and drop the score down and uh, once we drop the score down we can turn it around and start working on the rear so this little bit of youtube magic just put the score down So the front is done guys, it drives all right in the front but I can still feel like there's a little bumping going on in the back so let's tackle the back now and see what's happening there guys. Right, so cars, cars jacked up, um, doesn't look like there's too much work there, there's just a bolt there that has to be loosened to remove the shock from the rear suspension 
and then on the top here is two 14 volts or two 14 two 14 nuts that need to be removed there um, oops sorry guys for recording so bad um, well, four, two 14 nuts loosened from the top and once they loosened out they come out like that there so all that needs to happen here is remove the remove the the bolts and the shock should come out the spring is independent so as you can see there the spring is not attached to the shock so that makes this a lot more easy so let's get to it guys you see what size this is good shocks on here monroe shocks so you can see there Oh, there's a bolt inside as well, but I think that is welded in there, so it should stay still, but I just need to loosen that up. Not a 19, 18, too big, 17, yep. So, the rear shock is out, guys. You, once it's out, that was quite simple. Just this one bolt that had to be taken out. So, old shock, and new shock, same process applies guys, you need to bleed the shock, press it completely down and shoot up again, but all I'm going to do is transfer this over to the new shock and then we'll put it back in. The shock is also completely gone, it's not even pushing up, so could be replacing these. Right, there we go, all fitted, and now we just have to install our new shock. So guys, both shocks are in, mounted on their spots, all I need to do is just tighten that bolt there, tighten that bolt up there and then start working at the top, so let's do that quickly. That's tightened up. All we need to do now is tighten these bolts up at the top here. And once they are tightened up, then we just have to put the lock nut on top of it. So let's do that quickly. So guys, all that's left to do now is to put these wheels on, on both sides, once we put them on, uh, and that should be it for us guys, and we should be able to take it for a test drive, and see what's happening, so let's get the wheels on quickly.
So guys, we're going for a test drive now to test the car. It we finished the car yesterday, but it started raining and I never really got the chance to take it for a test drive. So after finishing up, first thing this morning, taking it for a test drive, guys. So let's see what happens. Yeah, guys I think it does feel much better now way better guys finally the car is driving perfect or close to perfect um, the problem that we were having like I said earlier is that it was an obnoxious knock over every single bump so that is sorted out now and yeah that was basically the goal of time to get this car um, driving smooth again because like I said 175 or 178 thousand kilometers the shocks hasn't been changed so even a little rock you felt in the road you felt it in the car guys so that's it guys um, if you did like the content please like comment and subscribe and we'll see you in another video with love for cars thanks for watching guys